score. Brooklyn Williams will take it himself. Missed the layup. Jefferson did not, though. A bitch. Over the shoulder. Jefferson throws it down. Well, he gets an opportunity to play point guard. And Corey Jefferson rams it in. It's transition. What were some of the hurdles that you overcame leaving college going into the NBA? I'll say the biggest hurdle would be just knowing who to talk to and having those people there. Uh, of course, you want to talk to your family about the decision that you're going to make. It's like one of the biggest decisions that you're going to make, especially or well, as an athlete anyway, just life changing and everything like that. Um, but also just knowing who to talk to and trusting the people that you do talk to. Because, of course, like you hear all the time a lot of stories with players and agents or players and family members not handling the process the right way and maybe trying to take advantage of the, of the player. But uh, thankfully, I was blessed to have agents that were really like family to me and people that I could actually trust. So after the whole process actually got started, that was a big weight off of my shoulders because I knew that they were really doing this because they just wanted to do it, not just because they were looking for somebody trying to you know, get some money off of. Your basketball camp, what made you want to start one? Like, Did Colleen already have a basketball camp out there? or? Is this something that you just, you always wanted to have for back home? I just always wanted to do a camp for, like, I just like being around kids and helping kids. And then after you do help them, seeing them smile and just them showing their appreciation, it's like a big thing for me. And then just the fact that I was one of those kids that I really started playing basketball late. I didn't really start till I was about 12, for real. And nobody ever believed me because I was always tall. Mm -hmm. So they would always try to get me to play, and I'd tell them I don't play basketball. So they think I was playing around until I actually got out there on the court and was like messing everything up. And I'm like, all right, yeah, get off the court. But so I was just trying to introduce it to the kids that don't really play or don't think they can play, you know, start them at a young age. And then the kids that are playing, just try to give them a better avenue to something to do to stay out of trouble. Sidebar, so like what made you want to just jump out there after 12 and get into it and get as good as you are my friends <laughs> yeah my friends are all playing basketball so they got me to try out uh i'll see basketball every now and then like i watch the games but i never actually played growing up but then of course when i got to middle school all my friends were playing so i tried out for the team and you made it barely i made <laughs> seventh grade seventh grade i made the b team and then eighth grade i made the a team barely again and then ninth grade is when i started playing aau so I started slowly getting better. And then around, around my f freshman summer of 10th grade, I mean, uh, summer of 10th grade is when I was like, OK, I can, I can really make this a career. I can go to college and then hopefully the NBA after that. As a young black man, how do you stay so grounded with like, it seems like on social media, a lot of the younger guys are just, they real flashy and everything they're very boastful and stuff but first meeting you and then just seeing you not really hearing a lot about you as far as rowdiness and stuff through social media how are you ever just to stay so humble and come across as such a, a great pleasant person to be around well first of all i know everything i got can be taken away quickly like i was i was blessed with the ability to play this game like i said i started literally from the bottom of playing. Like, nobody wanted me on the team when I was on the court. They, tell, they were telling me to get off. Um, but yeah, it's just, I don't know. I just don't see it as something that, that could be gone the next day, really. And then just with my family, that's like the biggest thing for me. Uh, of course, I like nice things and everything. Like I said, I have my chains and I had the nice cars. I had time with that, playing with that and got to do that. Uh, but other than that, my main thing was really just for my family. I wanted to get my money to make sure my family was good, mainly my kids, making sure after I was done playing, because another thing with basketball, we only get a certain amount of years. We don't know how many years. We could have like a career in an injury, and that's it. That's, for most of us, the way we make our money. So it's not like we doctors or something, and we can go until we're like in the 50s and 60s. We have a certain amount of time to do this and make our money. So I just try to do that the best I can for my family, really. That's good. Family first. Yeah, exactly. I wish you all that. Um, when you're playing here versus when you're playing overseas and stuff, do you notice a big difference in the amount of support and fans that you have when you're playing here versus when you're playing um, overseas? Uh, 
I say all the, well, the real support for me is all the same. Um, like I said earlier, I have the same group of friends that I had since, since I was in high school, my best friends anyway. Since I was in high school, uh, we talk all the time because we got a group chat and just talk all the time because I talk to my family. Um, but when I'm overseas, it's this exact same people. Of course, when I'm playing over here, when I was in the league, it would be more people trying to contact me through socials and everything. But I mean, when I went overseas, of course it was a less, but I didn't take that personally. That's just how it is. So I know, like I know who my exact group of people are that I can communicate anything with. And then at the same time, I've had my same phone number since high school. So I know if anybody tries to come and be like, yo, what's up? Let me, can I get some tickets or something? Like, I mean, sometimes I will get a tickets, but I'm not gonna do the extra. Like we just been buddy, buddy the whole time. Like I can go and look at my phone and say, you ain't text me. So it's like 10 years. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, just a, a question I just, that just came across. What has, since social media and like a lot more celebrities, people who play NBA and everything are on social media, has like high school kids reached out to you that are not in your account mm -hmm. trying to like find a way into the NBA or asking for like information or how they can get like the NBA's attention? Uh, not really just the NBA's attention, but I've had a few guys just reach out to me asking about different things. Some guys were just asking about some shoes because they had like a size 16, I wore the same size. So they're asking where I get my shoes from. But a lot of guys be asking like just different tips and things, things that scouts would look out for and things that they could work on with their game and things like that. What's something no one would have never guessed you were interested in? I don't think anybody would guess. Well, maybe they would, but I like cartoons, like the old, the old cartoons, like the the real Scooby Doo's and like Flintstones, the Jetsons, all that. What's one thing you want people to remember when they hear your name, Corey Jefferson? Mm, I just like to help people. Yeah, I feel that's a big thing for me. Like, say, from even if it's with the camp or uh, with school starting around next month, like just helping kids with bags or teachers with getting the items for their school or gas prices have been crazy lately. So uh, a couple of times I just randomly help people out with gas doing that. So it's just things like that. That's what's up. So when people hear your name, Corey, help people. I don't know about y'all, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, money saving tips. Do you have any of those? Uh, I feel I mean, once you get your money, like as an athlete, once you get your money, if there's that one thing that you always want to do, of course, everybody wants to do things for their parents, like get your mom a house, get your dad a car, something like that. And then something for you, like it's OK to have them things like do those things. But then like the rest, just put it away or at least put a certain amount away each month and then do things for you. Uh, just don't make sure just don't spend it. Say, oh, I'll get this much for this year. So I'm just going to spend it and we'll see what happens next year because you never know what's going to happen. Um, like I said, you have your little vice. I was, the biggest thing uh, one of my vets told me when I first got in the league is just like, find your vice. It's uh, something that's not going to get you in trouble, but just an outlet for you to do just one little thing and spend it. If it's nothing crazy, like just to get it that one time. Like if you like shoes, just all right, get a couple pairs of shoes and all right, that's your one check. Do it each time you get a check or you could just put the whole check away. But make sure you only spend it like a little bit of your check and just try to save up with the rest of that. Um, and then just get a financial advisor on top of that. Um, I was pretty good with my money about not spending it. So at the beginning, I didn't think I needed a financial advisor. Um, but I learned that it was more than just, okay, somebody to tell you not to spend your money. They know where to put your money to make it make more money, uh, things like that. So I say a financial advisor is definitely one of the biggest things. Has your um, perspective on life changed as much before COVID to now, kind of after? Uh, not really. I always saw things as, like I say, not taking anything for granted, uh, even before COVID and everything happened. Like I said earlier, I know things can change, like from today to tomorrow, everything can completely be gone. Uh, so I learned a long time ago not to take anything for granted. So I don't think really pre-COVID, post-COVID, I don't think anything changed as far as that for me. What can fans uh, look forward to coming from you or your wife and in your future? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know. 
I don't know. We really just be just be doing things. So whenever we got like an idea about something, uh, we'll just try to do it and see see what happens. So that's what right now we just enjoying the kids. But other than that, I guess we'll we'll find out when they find out. Numbers for Brooklyn Williams will take it himself.